Our next speaker, Nathan Kaiser, Cardano Foundation, one of our generous sponsors. He will talk about blockchain governance on and off chain. Looking forward to your talk. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All right. Ah, you need the clicker. There yeah, is. it's gonna. Oh, that works. Ooh, I press one. Yeah, okay, it works. great. Okay, I'm not gonna do a thing here. Hi, everybody. It's uh, thanks a lot for having me here. It's uh, it's uh, my first time in Berlin since about 10 years, so I'm quite excited. I have the uh, art is an art thing when I have presentations. Uh, like this, it's like all these organizers, they seem to cooperate and always put me on the last spot on the last afternoon. And then it's really up to me to wake everybody up, and which usually works, usually works. So uh, here we go, I think that's about it. Huh? People are coming back. Uh, yeah, you back there, you can also take a seat. Uh, I don't do repeated presentations, I always choose a new topic, so this is pretty off the bat in that sense, I got a couple of notes. And uh, the idea is also to make this a bit interactive, so I'm going to talk about, have some thoughts on, on and uh, off-chain blockchain governments, and, uh, and then it's really, please, uh, ask me questions. By the way, this is not, is a, we need to change this awfully big head, it shouldn't be that big. Yeah, yeah. In Cardano, there's no H in Cardano, but... So, um, but please then do ask questions. This is not a uh, sales pitch for Cardano, not at all, but rather uh, I'm interested, personally interested in, in blockchain governance, and I think you should be as well, uh, because we do see that this is sort of one of the several unsolved uh, issues. So, uh, let's talk about governance, and, and let's first talk about on-chain governance. Okay, what is on-chain governance? It's, you know, who votes how, when, where, and who can vote, you know, proof of work, proof of stake, uh, different stakeholders. That's not interesting. I'm going to speak, uh, I'm gonna, in the first five seconds, I'm going to already switch over and say, on-chain governance is really nothing else than the outcome of off-chain governance. And off-chain governance becomes much more interesting because it's like, wait, who are the people? behind the blockchain, or around the blockchain. Who are the stakeholders? And when we get to off-chain governance, we really quickly, so we say people. So what does that mean, people? So people, that's actually you. That's actually the, 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 the boys and the girls uh, who buy tokens, who run nodes, who, who code, who, who, who develop apps, and so on. So it's actually us. So really, off-chain governance is really about us and how we want to deal with a blockchain. And when we say want to deal, what does that mean? So it's really about values, about what do you want, what do I want, what do I think you should want, or what do I think you should not get, or what do I think I should get. So it's also about money, it's about identity, it's about trust, so often there is this trustless, we all know that's not the idea, the idea is it's trusted. And so trust, uh, it's not trust in technology, it's trust that the people behind the technology took the right decisions, that I agree with these decisions, that's governance. So I did that at my last presentation, I got these things and then when I'm done I just throw them in there. It, yeah, they don't fly very far. So, uh, when you read books or, or articles about blockchain governance, and arguably, uh, while this was a very empty field of study uh, two years ago, it slowly builds up, it slowly builds up. Very quickly, you come to uh, less things, code is law. Okay, code is law, that's 15 years old. Huh? That's not a blockchain thing, that's 15 years old. You very quickly come to, and, and here in Berlin, I, I think we have this thriving force of, oh, code versus law. No? Oh my God, you know, do we, is it the techies versus the government? Is there this binary sort of decision? I'm pro tech, I'm against the government. I'm pro code, I'm against regulation. No, that's not it. That's not blockchain governance. It's much more complicated than that. It's really a lot of stakeholders involved, and arguably, uh, let's talk about regulation. I'm a lawyer by training. I didn't present myself, but you can probably Google me. Um, there's a lot of regulation, but is regulation really holding us back? Listen to these two, uh, two, uh, two days of talk. 
Nobody said like, oh my God, if we only had this and that law, or oh, if we didn't have this and that specific prohibition, we would all be thriving. Um, there's always details. So we talked about, uh, I think it was Joe or John uh, from uh, DKYC, talked about KYC regulation. Yeah, that's tricky business. Yeah, we don't like it the way it is. Yes, it's outdated. Yes, tech can uh, do it better. But actually, we're providing a solution and this is, you know, this is an iterative uh, process where we say tech can get it better, and it will, ev eventually will. No, it's like a, a lot of things. Tech will eventually get better. The lawyers learn, the legislators learn, and the regulators learn. So I'm not worried about that. It's not tech versus government either. Is this going to go further? No? Yeah? Okay. So it's actually, again, really about people and people. And then, okay, so people and people, people and people. It's how we as a community, and within the blockchain, again, community is the users between them, it's, it's the enthusiasts, it's those who bought or invested, whether there is an investment or not, it's the developers, the core developers, it's those who came in later, those who were there early, how they actually want to organize themselves. So it's the question of how a community wants to have its rules between themselves. Hmm. And why do we care about that? You care about this because of yourself, because you want to be happy. So now it gets really fuzzy, you know, happiness. But that's what it is, justice. You want to wake up in the morning, and you want to code for that product, project where you feel happy and fulfilling uh, where you feel there's a fulfillment to work for the project, or where you're happy that you may have bought coin X for X, Y, and now it's much less, so much more. Maybe yesterday was that, tomorrow it's that. But you want to have a sense of belonging to all these other people who are working on the same project. So it's about community. Blockchain governance is community governance. Why does this matter? So, uh, Bakit is, uh, there's a couple of my team here, Bakit is here, he's the one who made that head so big, yeah, and the Karano with no H, but that, that was a joke. Uh, there's also other people there from IOHK, we got, we got people uh, from the Karano Foundation, we got people. So why does this matter? Let's use examples. Bakit told me, you need an example, it's like prep or something like that, okay. Uh, point, reason, example, point, thanks. Well, you know what, I'm gonna use an old one, but it's easier, it's like old in, in crypto, I think times seven, uh, two years, 14 years ago, there was the DAO. So let's use the DAO, everybody here, half of you were probably involved in some way or the other. Um, let's use the DAO. So what was the DAO really about? Was it about code versus law? Was it about tech versus some sort of arbitration that didn't exist? No. In the end, it was the whole DAO thing was really about different people with different opinions. I think we should that, do this. And you think you have a different opinion. You, should, you think you should do that. And that's what it was, no? It was different people having different opinions. The tech didn't, arguably didn't even matter. You could fork or not fork or fork twice or whatever. It was just, I had a different opinion than you did. And that was what the DAO was about. And did it matter? Oh yeah, of course, no, because back, no. It's because of you, because you had invested and you thought it would not be the right thing for you. And maybe some people were less self-interested and thought, I didn't invest, but I think, no, because of values, values. Uh, values can be money or, or, or emotional value. Back to emotion, happiness, you remember, you, you thought it was fuzzy, but if you put all your life savings into the DAO and it was gone, that ain't fuzzy. There's no fuzziness about that, yeah. So, um, a different example, uh, the project, I'm just taking a, a newer project, Algorand, which, you know, is a great effort, and it's a, one of the more recent efforts and how they're gonna distribute this and that, and token, and you know, on, again, on-chain on -chain governance. And when you read on this, you can see people having opinions before it even happens, and rightly so. Because we care, we care. Yeah. 
So uh, sometimes I have troubles reading my own notes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. So what do we want? What do we want? That's actually the question. And here is my point, or two points actually. I think I should have made that earlier, Bakit, I know. The point is that the question of how you organize a group of people, a community, is an old question. And people have been thinking about this for a long time. And I don't want to go back you know, 5,000 years, but I do want to go back 3,000 years at least. And yeah. <laughs> and so what's 3,000 years ago? Uh, the Greeks, no? The Greeks. Democracy. Votes. So we are thinking in the crypto industry, in, in our scene, we are thinking about the same questions. Should you be able to vote? Yeah. Should you not be able to vote because you're this or that, or because you're holding or staking, you, you, you stake more, you vote more? Those are the same questions. So we need to be aware in our dear industry that it's not just the tech, it's not just the law, it's not just the finance, guys. And I'm going to cite uh, Mark Bernecker, who's over there, who was the one person in these two days who said, philosophers. So what we actually need is philosophers. We need social science, uh, scientists, social sciences. We don't just need the lawyers. I'm a lawyer, no? I'm, I'm one of these typical crypto lawyers that hang out at the conferences, and there's others. And uh, we don't need, uh, we, we need the lawyers. Of course you need the lawyers, yeah. You need the techies. You need the finance guys, Jeff. But we also need philosophers, we need people who think about people. Yeah, that's, that's something. And I was going to say my original draft here, I was going to say this conference, like every other conference, lacks the social scientists. What's the other big class of social sciences that were often lacking? Economists. But okay, you had sin here, so you kind of... Kudos to the organizers. I thought it was fantastic. You had an economist on board. We need more of these people on these conferences. And please, maybe next time in Berlin, I'd be happy to come back next year. Uh, let's find a philosopher. Yeah. Um, just going to go from the Greeks quick. Obviously, after the Greeks, more stuff happened. No, the Romans. Uh, this is a bit Western thinking. We can do the, uh, the Asian thinking, too. And then Montesquieu. Um, and, and, and Montesquieu was talking about separation of powers. And you're all like, oh my God, this lawyer is not talking about separation of powers. No, is, is he insane to bother the crypto industry with a notion that's uh, 300 years old? No, that's exactly what you can read on all the crypto blogs every day. Separation of power, who votes for what? How do we do a fork and not do a fork? How do we do holders, users, developers, uh, and, uh, and third-party applications? That's actually separation of power. Who decides on how to, me happy, how to make me happy or how to make you happy? L'Esprit des Lois is, uh, is, is one of the main uh, writings of Montesquieu. So the spirit of laws, and it fuzzy again it becomes, laws matter because they are about people. And I'm not talking the regulatory laws, so KYC and all that. I'm talking the laws of crypto, the regul how is a blockchain governed? It's about people, it's about the spirit. And that's what we, we need to recognize that. It's not a tech problem, it's not a legal problem, it's a people problem. Okay, well this one is done so I can do it at the same time, okay. I'm gonna uh, do a couple, I'm almost there, I think, time-wise as well. Uh, I'm going to cite Elad, which is uh, one of the uh, crypto cryptography uh, guys in, in, in Berlin uh, that I met earlier today, and he said, a blockchain takes a village. And I was like, oh my god, can I cite you? A blockchain takes a village, no? And, and you, you know what that means. It means it takes a lot of people. It takes schools and nurses and education and policemen and firemen. And I think that's something, it's, none of us can say we just need more and better tech. No, it takes a village. Blockchain takes a village. Yeah. 
This is almost the end of the speech. Um, one more thing, I had to do a little bit of advertisement, I'm allowed to do so, and uh, about Cardano. Um, I'm not gonna go into details, but we did this card, this really cool card, and uh, a lot of it is network effect, and, and we're talking, uh, we're talking uh, uh, how can we expand the network and so on. And this is one attempt, one of many, a valid one, IOHK did the programming, thanks IOHK. Tangem did the cards, thanks Tangem. And we had the foundation made it possible. Everybody in here can get a card, and you just pick them up at the entrance. And I think we got 50 cards, so we kind of didn't take enough. Uh, so if you didn't get a card, then you can still, give me one more second. Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> uh, then you can actually just leave your name and we'll mail you one, all right? And then last one, and I had never uh, time to actually have a sip of this. Proof of SIP. Proof of SIP. This is the gin and, uh, from over there, Satoshi Spirits. Thanks a lot, Satoshi Spirits. It's a really great gin. Thanks a lot, and now it's Q&A. It's all yours. Great, OK. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we have some time for some questions. Please come in front and use the mic and ask our favorite questionnaire. <laughs> yes. Hello, hi. Uh, so you're talking about Montesquieu, would, would you think that in this case with the blockchain era, is it more um, the hops and locks or is it more Montesquieu? That actually Rousseau says is more like a socialism and uh, what do you think, like wh where would you put the blockchain era in the philosophy way? Uh, Hobbes had a very dark, uh, when you read Leviathan, Hobbes had this dark view or an arguably dark view on, on uh, the we would call it the regulator or the government. And uh, so actually, I, I don't see it in that sense. I, I don't have, as a lawyer, I'm part of the legal system or the judiciary system. And my, you know, the biggest enemy is your best enemy. And that's always the government. As a lawyer, if you get sued by the government or you sue the government, that's the best. No, that's the true batch of honor. So I don't see it in a, in a, in a Hobson sort of like Leviathan uh, kind of view. I, I think... It's again, it's more about stakeholders. This is a very modern word. I think the Greeks didn't call them stakeholders, I, I trust. And so, no, I, I, don't, I don't see this as a black and white. I think we're all helping each other to move this forward. Yeah. yeah. You can get pushy questions too. More I questions. Don't mind. Yeah, Sebastian. Yeah. You can Just really, yeah. Please, please tell us about the card. What is it? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, again, so I'm only the lawyer and the chairperson of the Cardano Foundation. I'm like, I'm not the tech guy. I stopped uh, programming BASIC when I was like 14. Uh, you too, yeah, the ZX81, uh, you remember that? The black thing that you could really not type on. It's like, oh man, yeah. Oh, one kilogram, one kilobyte, yeah. Uh, and then I had enough, yeah. <laughs> so what the card does is it comes with an app. It has a, a NFC chip. And so you can securely store um, crypto on it. Different cards obviously do different crypto. So this is not multi-wallet. This is not multi-crypto. multi, multi -crypto. Uh, This is the ADA version. There is a, a Bitcoin version and so on. And basically it allows you, you have a private key somewhere. And this is uh, not hackable in that sense because it's secured the way it's, uh, the, the chip is secured. And then you can actually give this somebody and transfer the private key separately and you can keep this or, or I keep it as storage at home and then uh, with the private key I can then transfer the, um, the, uh, the crypto asset or, or value. So it's a embodiment, it's one of the, that's why I say, and there's other people in the room who do similar projects and, and this is only one step and we're, we're only at the beginning one step to make user-friendliness is an issue, no? I mean, I could talk, totally different story, user interfaces, no? I mean, like, what is holding all this up? Oh, user interfaces is definitely holding all of us up, no? I mean, not, not, not the regulators, yeah? Not the Germans and not the European Union and, and not even the SEC. User interface is, is, is one of the issues. Please, yeah. One more question. Last question, I think. So would that card be useful, let's say, to the merchants or shops? Let's say if they have a Cardano <laughs> card, would they be able to pay it in crypto directly and then just use the NFC? Do you have some system like that as well that you're going to introduce? Uh, right. No, so it's actually both. So there's the idea of, of linking that system, the, the Tangem system, with a POS. No? 
So yeah. you obviously would have the POS set up to read the card with the NFC, and then the cold storage becomes kind of usable within a POS setting. POS meaning physical yeah, brick and mortar yeah, store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's correct. But, but you know the truth is, ask the guys from Tangem or ask yeah, me. Yeah, you go from Tangem. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then the real answer is, it's so early. Do we really know? No, of course we don't know. No, yeah. it's like it's up to you guys. The, the hackers, the techies, the commercial people to come up with new stuff. Because I, I don't know, you know yeah, people yeah. just put forward stuff and then we can build. Now, in an early presentation, I said it's like Lego. If you only have like five Lego pieces, you're not going to build a castle or a Ferrari out of Lego. So we're, all of you guys and girls, you're building Lego pieces. We're building Lego pieces so with more pieces, we can do more stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Big round of applause. Yeah. 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 Yeah.